Welcome to a video on how to get good at the engineer, the class that is designed around supporting his team by building powerful sentry guns, life-saving dispensers, and teleporters that can help their team advance long distances quickly. Players who can master this hard hat wearing Texan will be able to provide more support for their team than the Overwatch developers actually giving a shit about their game. Let's get started. The Engineer is one of the three defense classes in the game and can be one of the easier classes to play since his buildings often carry a lot of this class's potential power. The Engineer only has 125 health, making him fairly frail in comparison to the tankier classes, but he does move at a steady 300 hammer units per second, so he can move around the battlefield fairly quickly. The Engineer's primary weapon of choice is of your standard shotgun, normally used as a secondary weapon for other classes. The shotgun may be basic, but it is reliable. If you get up close and personal with the weapon, the shotgun fires at 1.6 shots per second and has 6 ammo in the clip and up to 32 ammo in reserve. The reload duration varies depending on how much you expend within the clip, though luckily for the Engineer, he is one of the two classes who reloads the first shotgun shell the fastest alongside heavy, so running out of ammo mid-fight won't hurt as much. Each shot fired shoots out 10 pellets, 9 of which will be displaced randomly, whilst one will always be in the center. Each pellet has a base damage of 6, for a maximum of 60 damage per shot, but if you stuff the barrel right up someone's ass and pull the trigger, you can ramp up the damage to 9 per pellet, or a maximum of 90 damage. Of course, like other weapons, it suffers greatly at range, being reduced to only 3.1 damage per pellet, and the random bullet spread will make it wildly inconsistent to use at long distances. The shotgun is best used as a defense tool, either to defend your buildings from danger, finish off low health enemies after an encounter, or, if you have social and trust issues, spy check your teammates, since those motherfuckers will be after you and your buildings. The moment your Texan life begins existing within a lobby, you also have a pistol, which functions exactly the same as the scouts, though with two differences. The minor change is that the engineer takes slightly longer to reload his pistol in comparison to scout, though this is rather negligible, especially since in return, the engineer carries a fuck off huge amount of ammo in reserve at 200 fucking bullets. This massive ammo reserve essentially means that if the enemy team decides to recreate the entire population of America on their side of the map in the form of sentry guns, feel free to pull out your pistol and tell those Uncle Dane wannabe pieces of shit to fuck off elsewhere, since you've come to do your very important job of making your buildings. The buildings are a key part of the engineer's arsenal, and as such, you should defend them and make sure they are up and running for as long as possible. For each second one of these three buildings is not out on the field, you are not reaching your maximum potential. Constructing buildings requires metal, and the engineer starts out with 200, and can obtain more through either the supply closet, ammo packs, or dispensers from other engineers. Teleporters only cost 50 metal, though this is 50 for both the entrance and exit. Dispensers cost 100 metal, and the sentry gun is the most expensive, at 130 metal. When placed, buildings come out of a toolbox and take a large window of time to set up, though this process can be sped up by hitting them with your wrench, to where it only takes a few seconds and then they'll be ready to go. Unless you absolutely have to, you should never leave a building to construct by itself, since it will just take far too long, especially if it is placed in the middle of the fight, since leaving buildings to construct themselves will lead them to being destroyed faster than the average Friday night funking modder's reputation after becoming successful. Now onto the individual buildings themselves, starting with the most important building of all, being the dispenser. 
The dispenser is the heart of the engine these buildings, and is his most supportive out of the three. The dispenser heals and replenishes ammo of any ally that stands close to it, and also generates metal every 5 seconds for the engineer to use. Dispensers should be placed close enough to the front line as to where teammates will be able to find them easily after suffering damage in combat, but not too far up, as so that they'll be destroyed and spotted by enemies. You should also place them near health and ammo pack locations your team has access to, since experienced people will memorize those locations, and if they see a dispenser there, then they'll be more inclined to use it. Just be cautious however, since spies who are disguised can also use your dispenser for their own personal needs and can also use it to not look as suspicious. So when performing your usual spy checks, make sure to check everyone who's using your dispenser since you never know who could be friend and who could be foe. Dispensers generate metal every 5 seconds and can hold up to a maximum of 400, as shown on the display interface on the front of the building. This makes them easily the best building you'll want to set up first, since they can provide you with the resources to set up your other buildings. Upgrading dispensers increases how much healing and ammo they provide, and also how much metal they generate, so you should get the dispenser to level 3 as fast as possible, as to allow both yourself and your teammates to actually get their fucking jobs done. Teleporters also support your team, though not on the same level as the dispenser. For the teleporter to work, you must build both the entrance and the exit buildings, and then the two will sync up. Once constructed, any ally that stands on the entrance will be teleported to the exit. When this occurs, the teleporter will need to recharge before it can teleport someone else again, which when at its default value of level 1, takes a whopping 10 whole bastard seconds to recharge, which is about the average attention span of a 9 year old Fortnite player who just learned what a racial slur is. Because of this, teleporters should never be left at level 1, since the recharge time will just be too slow for your team to effectively use and should get it up to either level 2 or level 3 as fast as possible. It also goes without saying that there is obviously a priority in who should take the teleporter and who should not use it. To save ourselves some time, here is a general tier list in terms of teleporter priority. The higher you are on the list, the more priority you have. If you ever think about using this as a spray, place it somewhere right before the teleporter so that your teammates can read it once in a blue moon, since most people probably won't give two shits and just take the teleporter anyway. Finally, we have the sentry gun, the main source of firepower for the engineer, and the best way to annoy the shit out of unsuspecting flankers who expect free reign over the backline, only to be turned into a corpse by your powerful sentry gun. The sentry gun has a maximum range of 1100 hammer units across all three levels, so whilst it can dish out a large amount of damage within a large area, you will need to be careful of where you place it, since some sight lines will simply be too long for the sentry to reach, and if a soldier happens to have the direct hit when he spots a sentry, you can kiss that metallic heap of shit goodbye. At level 1, the sentry is rather pitiful only dealing up to 19 damage per shot at 4.4 rounds per second, but it does still have quite the decent kill power, and can still be useful as a distraction. At level 2, it gains a second barrel, which increases its rate of fire by 68%, granting its much higher firepower and potency to kill high health targets. And at level 3, it gains a rocket launcher, allowing it to deal huge burst damage every 3 seconds. The bullets and rockets fired by the sentry gun do need to be refilled every so often, so do keep those in mind. Additionally, with every level, all buildings increase in health by 20%. Starting at a base value of 150 for level 1, 180 for level 2, and 216 for level 3. This health increase can allow your buildings to survive deadly threats and survive for longer periods of time within risky areas. But of course, this means that they need to be repaired when damaged, and repairing your shit costs metal. This is especially apparent with the sentry gun, which needs metal not only to repair it, but also metal to replenish its ammo supply, and if it's constantly gunning down targets and being shot at simultaneously, it's going to be plowing through your metal supply, like the fat kid at an all-you-can-eat buffet. This does not mean you should hoard your dispenser for yourself however, since this is not only selfish as fuck, 
but it could also run the risk of both buildings being destroyed simultaneously, and your team screaming at you for being a useless sack of shit. So it's best to keep your dispenser away from your sentry, as to avoid unwanted attention towards it. Keeping on topic with spanking shit with your wrench, spies also complicate things, since their role on the team is essentially designed almost exclusively in shanking your buildings with his spectacular electronic shanking device. This electronic shanking device will disable the functionality of your building entirely, and will rapidly drain its health, but with just two swings of your wrench, you can easily remove the device. It is important to deal with the spy as well, since they can just replace the electronic shanking device instantly with no cooldown, so make sure to deal with them accordingly. One last thing to keep in mind is that if a building is in a location that you are either satisfied with, or feel that it is in immediate danger, then you can pick it up and move them accordingly. Whilst holding one of your buildings, you move 10% slower, which whilst not much, does mean that enemies might be able to catch up to you. And should they kill you whilst you are holding a building, the building will also be destroyed. In terms of strengths, the engineer's buildings offer powerful utility and firepower that can help defend certain locations and make flankers have a difficult time taking him down. His teleporter and dispenser can greatly help out his team in not only providing them healing and extra resources, but also in getting back into the fight faster and keeping up the pressure. However, the engineer is rather frail with only 125 health, and his weapon selection doesn't do as much damage in comparison to other classes, making him fairly reliant on his buildings. Certain classes will make doing your job as an engineer a living nightmare, especially if they are competent and know exactly what they're doing. Thanks to this guide, you will now be the master of building up your shit and watch as all of the scout mains complain about your superior existence. Be sure to come back for the next episode next week. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more shit like this. Have fun.